I want to welcome you to our devotional message tonight, How to Turn to God. And tonight, I specifically want to look at how do you turn to God when you've ran so far from Him. So let's get, let's get our Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 15, and let's get started with a word of prayer. Lord, I thank you that you're there for us. Lord, and I pray that as we look at your word, as we talk about the steps that we need to take to turn to you, I pray that you would speak to each heart tonight. I pray that you would lead and guide us. Lord, we love you and we thank you for loving us. And I pray, Lord, that you would be glorified in our hearts. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. How do you turn to God when you have ran so far from him? Raise your hand if you were raised up in church. You know, many of us were raised in church, so to speak. Going to vacation Bible school as kids, attending youth camps, sitting through sermons, enduring those times, even being baptized by some preacher. Even though you had a Bible, toted it to church, or even read it some, you chose to go your own way. You decided to, to seek your happiness away from the God that you heard about in church. Many of us signed our declaration of independence from God's country and set out for another country. We indulged in the party scenes of culture, played with the obscene, and sought the thrills of alcohol, drugs, pornography, or immorality. Some of us even tried other forms of spirituality. In all of our pursuits, we lived by the anthem, I did it my way. But then comes a day. You know that day. It is the day you realize that free loving and free living ain't so free. It is a sobering reality that you have spent your integrity, your purity, and your sanity with nothing to show for it. And the consequences of your choices overwhelm you with brokenness. Guilt and shame wrap around you like a weighted blanket. The emptiness of your soul, the hungering of your heart, brings a pressing question to your mind. How do I turn to God when I have ran so far from Him? If you're asking that question, I have some good news for where you are. Jesus answers this question in one of His most famous parables. We know we know this parable as the parable of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. It is one of three stories that Jesus tells when he is criticized by religious leaders for, quote, welcoming sinners. The parable is the most vivid picture of the heart of God toward every wayward soul. So let's read that story together. Luke chapter 15, beginning with verse 11. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and he hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to the fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and he went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, 
Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Wow. Isn't that a beautiful story? In this story, we see the steps we take in turning to God when we've ran so far from Him. Here's a good Jewish boy who took advantage of the privileges he had, of the kindness of his father. He left his father's house. He broke his father's heart. He selfishly wasted all of his inheritance and disgraced his family name in seeking his own pleasure. You could say that he threw his life away and he ended up in a pig pen in the far country. Now, culturally speaking, for a Jew, what Jesus is describing is what we would call he hit rock bottom. The most shameful, the dirtiest, and the farthest place that one could ever be from God. So how do you turn to God when you're in the pig pens of the far country? The prodigal son had a sobering moment. Jesus says he came to his senses. He had a moment of clarity, a dose of reality. In that moment, he turned. He went back to his father. And he found his father waiting on him with open arms. When we have this moment in our pig pen, there's one thing we need to know. There's three things we need to do. Here's what you need to know. Know the heart of God. You may have ran far from God, but God has never moved. God's love for you never changes. As Creator, Savior, and Provider, our Heavenly Father is faithful forever. The Bible says, I, the Lord, do not change. Malachi 3.6 Speaking of the unchanging character of God, the psalmist writes in Psalm 103, 8 through 13, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in faithful love. He has not dealt with us as our sins deserve. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is His faithful love. As a father has compassion on his children, the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. With this parable, Jesus captures what the psalmist says about the character of God. And Jesus gives a beautiful picture of the heart of God. The father stands waiting, watching, and willing to receive the wayward son with open arms. Just picture what Jesus said. He saw him from a distance, filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Now in their culture, men wore long robes demonstrating their dignity. It was disrespectful for an older man to tuck up his robe like a diaper and run. This father was being completely undignified. He loved and desired a relationship with his son more than his own dignity. Understand what Jesus is saying about the heart of God. Although God, although God is holy and righteous, he is willing to meet us where we are in our sin and shame. And how did God do that? How did God run to us? By sending his son Jesus to bear our sin and our disgrace upon the cross. At the cross, Jesus lost all dignity as He died in our place. If you ever doubt the love of God, if you ever doubt the heart of God, look at the cross. He gave His Son. At the cross, He is waiting, watching, and His arms are always open wide 
to receive you. Jesus is now the way back to God. 1 John 4.10 says, This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So this is what you need to know. You may have run far from God, but He has not moved. God is love. Jesus is the way home to the Father, and that truth never changes. So here's what you need to do. Three things. Number one, be humble and honest about your sin. Stop running from God and start returning to God. The Bible calls this step confession. It means that we agree with God about our sin and its consequences in our lives. When Jesus says the prodigal son came to his senses, he means the son was humble and honest about where his selfishness and sin had taken him. This is an important, this is an important step in turning to God. Confession is honestly calling sin what God calls sin. This humbly requires us to be specific about sin and not to make excuses for it. Anything less is just shallow sorry. God knows where you are and He knows what you've done, but He needs you to humbly and honestly come to your senses. Here, we can take a very practical step of writing down our sins and our consequences. The prodigal said, I have sinned against heaven and you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Take heart. God gives us a great promise. When we are humble and honest before Him. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Know that God's forgiveness in Christ is final and forever. He remembers your sin no more when you come to Him humbly and honestly. Number two, be sincere in turning to God. Stop sitting where you are and turn to where God is. The Bible calls this step repentance. It simply means to change direction. Sincere repentance is when we have a change of heart and mind toward God, turning away from selfish, sinful actions and turning to seek God and His truth. Jesus said the prodigal son got up and went to his father. He had to leave the pig pen behind and take real steps on the road back to his father. This requires us to be sincere about what needs to be left behind in our lives so that we can take real steps back to God. In taking real steps, we need to start back praying for God's guidance and strength. Getting back to reading His Word daily. You can start in one of the Gospels like Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Reconnecting with a church in worship and Bible study and even seeking counsel from other Christians. Ask God to speak to your heart through His Word specifically about who He is and what He wants in your life. Write down what He says and do it in faith. God in His love gives us a great promise. Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Be sincere in turning to God and you will find Him waiting for you. The third thing is this. Be willing to accept God's love in Christ. Stop waiting for a feeling and come as you are in faith. When you read this story, can you believe that God is like this? He celebrates you. He dances in joy over you. When you humbly accept God's love, the Bible calls this step faith. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. 
And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Notice the remarkable ending to Jesus' story. The prodigal son returns to his father just as he is, wearing dirty old rags, smelling like the pig pen, with all the scars of the far country. He is feeling completely unworthy and very awkward in returning to his father. Yet the son is met with acceptance, not rejection. And it is one of the most beautiful scenes in the Bible. The father did not put him on a guilt trip or lecture him with, I told you so. He ran to him with compassion, received him with open arms, a loving heart, and a joyful celebration. The prodigal didn't have to prove himself or repay his inheritance. By grace alone, the father fully restored him to his position in the family. Bring him the best robe, put a ring on his finger, and sandals on his feet. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they begin to celebrate. At that point, it is easy to imagine this son having no problem living under the authority of his father, doing the will of his father, because he was embraced and restored by the love of his father. Jesus is giving us a beautiful picture of salvation. Everybody returns to God the same way. By the way of the cross, through faith in His Son. When we return to God through faith in Christ, we are received into the family of God. He celebrates you. Your identity in Christ gives you a new destiny. And who you are in Christ defines you determines your purpose, and directs your daily choices. The Bible says in Romans 13, 14, Clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ, and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Once you turn to God in humility and accept His love and accept Christ in faith, we are to dress up in Jesus, just like we put our clothes on every day. We are to dress up in Jesus every day in order to know Him, to love Him, and to live for Him. As a child of God, living by faith in Christ now becomes our priority. And our hope in Christ now determines our eternity. Isn't that a great story? Now the Bible says that God is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone like this prodigal to come to repentance, to return to Him. So no matter where you grew up or how you grew up, in church or out of church, we can all relate to running from God, to finding ourselves in the pig pen of the far country. As a result, many of us have surrendered to the sinful habits that control our hearts. It may be an addiction of some form, a moral failure of some kind, immoral habits that we hold on to, or just selfish pursuits that we brush off as just the way we are. No matter the pig pen you find yourself in, it is easy to give into sin and to give up on yourself. Jesus is saying through the parable of the prodigal, God has not given up on you. God has not given up on you. He is waiting on you with open arms. God has never stopped loving you and He never will. He is longing to welcome you home in Christ. He wants to celebrate over you as His child. Jesus is the way home to the Father. As Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and no one comes unto the Father except through me. So no matter how far you have run from God, today is the day to come home. Be honest with yourself and with God. Be sincere in turning to God 
and be willing to accept God's love in Christ. A simple, sincere prayer, and God will meet you where you are, forgive you of your sin, and save you to be who He wants you to be. He will celebrate. He will dance over you. If you need to make that decision today, you can pray this simple prayer with me. Dear God, I trust that Jesus is your Son and that He died on the cross for my sin and was raised to life again. I humbly ask you to forgive me of my sin. I am willing to change the direction of my life. I ask Jesus to come into my life and to be my Lord and Savior. I ask you to fill me with His Spirit that I may know you, love you, and live for you from this point forward and forever. Thank you for hearing my prayer and for giving me eternal life and hope. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If God's laid a decision on your heart, I invite you to contact me through email at crbro70.com uh, or you can contact the church. I'll be glad to pray with you about any decision uh, that God is leading you to make. I love you, friendship, and I hope you have a great rest of the week.